So you might have heard that Apple bought a fingerprint sensor company is going to probably put that sensor into a future iPhone or something like that, or maybe a watch. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, one of the problems in our world is we have so many passwords and so many, uh, our identity is so important to this world. How do you keep your identity? I mean, do you use a little RSA key like we do at Rackspace? Or do you use a new Bluetooth uh, thing that spits uh, your identity into the air? Well, those have problems because they're they can be separated from me, right? <laughs> well, we're gonna to talk to Sonovation who has a different kind of fingerprint technology than Apple has. And it's much more accurate and much harder to fake. We're gonna find out more about all this biometric scanning technology right now. Yeah. And so who are you? I'm Bob Stewart. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Sonovation, and I uh, joined the company back in November of this year, having come from uh, EMC's Physical Security Group, uh, the folks that uh, you invented that uh, RSA key, and uh, we are uh, very excited about the, uh, the, the technology that we have to bring to show it to you today. Yeah, and y you guys made a big breakthrough through in how you actually look at the finger, right? We did. Uh, it's not just uh, scanning the surface or the ridges of the fingerprint anymore, right? Correct. Uh, Sonovation as a technology company was spun out of Crossmatch Technologies, which is the originator of the optical technologies used for fingerprint reading. They're really the, you know, the grandfather of the APHIS database used by the FBI. But all of that technology takes a, uh, a reductionist approach, where they're taking a high-resolution image uh, from the fingertip and then reducing that down to the feature sets that are of interest to uh, you know, a fingerprint when it's used in a one-to-many matching system. So it's you know, really uh, sort of Sherlock Holmes-ish, where they're trying to say this piece of this fingerprint applies against uh, you know, this database to reduce a suspect list. Uh, we're really about more than that. We're looking 3D, we're looking into the future of what does biometrics and what can be done with biometrics from the fingertip. And it's not just a surface thing. Identity is more than skin deep these days. Yeah, before we get into the technology, why do we need this? Why, why do we need, a, what are you talking about? Oh, okay. Um, why do we need a, a fingerprint scanner? Who, who will use this? Is it going to be a cell phone company? or a, Tell me where you see, see it, the need for this. Well, we have, uh, we have a lot of different uh, you know, in, industrial applications that are beginning to emerge. You know, it, this really was driven out of a government requirement initially. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the industry has been accepting uh, the, the, the intrusion of uh, fingerprint technology in direct relation to the threat that's come up. So when you have, uh, you know, when, when passwords were good enough, there wasn't a need for this technology. But, yeah. you know, as, uh, as passwords have become more complex and more difficult to remember, and we have more and more of them, uh, we're finding most of our customers are folks that are trying to resolve those issues, either from a recovery aspect, you know, how do I know that it's me logging into this new account that I established, um, or for an out of bandwidth type of uh, connection where, you know, is it me who just spent that money with my Visa card? Yeah. Uh, you know, so all of these uh, types of use case scenarios are starting to crop up where, you know, a, a, a higher degree of authentication that it is you doing what it is that you're trying to do uh, becomes, you know, an important important way of uh, um, you know, ensuring and reducing fraud and improving that end user customer experience. Uh, you know, remembering all these passwords is very expensive for large companies, especially you know, Google just released uh, their five-year roadmap on biometrics and they said at the end of it, you know, it was really uh, it, it tied into the very beginning of the report, which said that the costs in recovery of passwords for end users, for someone who legitimately lost their, your, their identity credentials is uh, staggering, and uh, right. how, do they, how do they scale? Um, so the, you know, the way that you can do that is by having a, a, a way of biometrically linking a person to their identity, uh, and doing that in a secure fashion is what we're, we're all about. Yeah, um, so let's talk about the technology. First of all, the, the technology you've, you've built is very, very thin, very small. That it is, and yes. I, I think, in fact, you have one of the, oh, and let me p show it here on the, on the uh, GoPro camera. Sure. Um, so these this, are, this is two of our sensors. This is our swipe sensor, and this is our touch sensor. And this sensor right here is 100 microns thick, or thin, as you, as. Uh, oops, sorry, I can't see. Rocky, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get it up on the screen, okay. 
Yeah, it's so small, it's hard for me to get it on the GoPro. <laughs> but this is a paper thin sensor, and this sensor is more traditional, right? Correct. This is a swipe sensor. It uses. Is right over it. Yeah. Ah. ah, got it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a this is your traditional swipe sensor, which yep. uses uh, acoustic impediography when you're swiping your finger across it. It is reading a high resolution, uh, you know, surface scan about 2,500 DPI, if you would. Uh, and in this case, this this will just be a touch. You just touch it, and it will read your not just your fingerprint though. Uh, it'll actually insonicates the tissue and reads a three dimensional map of the fingertip. Now that's really cool. So th this is going to be much more accurate than the uh, swipe. Yeah, as far as we know, it's the most accurate biometric we've ever seen. So let's talk about how that works because it, it's not a camera. It's correct something else. It's not a camera. <laughs> <laughs> so in in uh, in almost every other biometric out there, whether it's a fingerprint, they take a high resolution uh, optical scan or capacitance based scan, and then they reduce that down to black and white. Then they find the feature points that are of interesting: the bifurcations, the swirls, the ridge flows, yeah. and they use those in a reduced set. Uh, to match up against on the fly. So in the, they store the reduced set, then in the future you swipe your finger across it, recreates that and says, does the constellation match? Um, so that's a reductionist approach. Well, you know, the same thing is true with an iris scanner, right? You yeah. go up, you put your eye up to the thing, it's taking a high resolution scan, it's finding the feature points that it thinks are of interest, it's storing those in a database and it's doing a match in that correlation. Yeah. Uh, it's arguably it is a better biometric because A, it's harder to fake an eyeball, and B, it's uh, you know it's a, an order of magnitude more data points that are being stored. Now it's really interesting because there's an eye sensor in this Google Glass, so that thing is looking at my eye. I'm wondering if it's going to use. <laughs> is it going to use that for biometric? Well, I, I'm 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 certain that they have the capacity of doing that in the same approach as has been done traditionally. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may be a little while before the technology finally catches up, but uh, there's no question that it's going that direction. What we're what we're looking at though is how do we take uh, what's been a reductionist approach and throw that approach out because we're not about one-to-many matching. I'm not trying to say it was B Robert who got Bob in the studio with a candlestick. I'm really looking at saying, is it you trying to access your device? Yeah. So it's a one-to-one -one match on the device that you're enrolling on. And in that case, we're actually taking and using signals analysis, uh, much like the military does, or much like, um, uh, oh, what's the... The application that you play the music and it tells you what it is. Oh, Shazam. Um, Shazam, yeah. Right, where, where we're looking at the raw signals from an output from a uh, ultrasound machine and saying, is this Robert Scoble or not? Yeah. Right. So what we're doing is we're putting this high resolution data, we're never reducing it. And then on the fly, we're creating that data again, and then we're subtracting one from the other. And if it leaves a null set, it's you. If it leaves anything other than a null set, it's not you. So we'll reject it at that point. Interesting. So, yeah. T tell me how this sensor works and uh, how many different elements are, well, what is this sensor? Because it's not a camera, it's not looking, it's not like a, you know, a, 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 a DSLR, right? That's, That's right. taking a grid of pixels. It's, what is it? It's not, at? it's actually, it's actually a, um, a field or a, a field of pillars that are cut out of a ceramic tile. Um, I don't know if it's... Rocky, because uh, we have a picture of it up on our Mac on here. Uh, Mac? Yeah. So what we do is we start, start off with a uh, flat ceramic tile that we make here in, in Palm Beach Gardens. Uh, we then cut that into rows and columns that create these pillars. And those pillars in their final state are only 100 microns tall. We then flood those pillars with an epoxy resin, and then we metalize the top and the bottom of it and connect it to our ASIC, which you can see here. Uh, once that's done, uh, we, we power up the pillars, which causes them all to ring and they ring at about 15 uh, megahertz. And then it's creating sound waves. Yeah. And we're actually able to read the backscatter from those sound waves to determine features in the fingerprint or in the finger itself down to about 20 microns. Wow. Yeah. And you're looking, this sensor looks into the skin, right? It, That's correct. It's not just looking at the ridges and the swirls on the on the surface of the skin. That's it's right. Actually, We're actually able to read those those ridges and swirls, and we do use those for targeting our data set. Uh, but we're actually reading all seven layers of the epidermis, the underlying fat pad, the fascia, the microvasculature, the vasculature, the uh, arterial blood flow that's going through that, the bone structure, the nail bed. We can read pretty much zero to eight millimeters deep into the tissue. 
And we're, not, we're actually doing that so rapidly, we're not just creating a 3D image of your finger, but we actually pick up a temporal dimension, which picks up and we can detect the systolic and diastolic pressure wave of your heart beating. So right. that, that means that if somebody cut off my finger and tried to hold it on the sensor... If Tom Cruise comes after you, you're, you know, your, your data will be safe. Uh, we really see wow. that uh, you know, there's some other... Uh, now, is that exciting... true of the other sensors, like the sensor that Apple's using? And yeah. So they could cut my finger off and hold it to my or future take, iPhone. Yeah, or take a, you know, a silicon gel finger like was done in South America, all those doctors that were scamming the medical system down there. There's a lot of different uh, things that have been done to fake traditional capacitance-based uh, uh, fingerprint and optical-based fingerprint sensors. Wow. But this really just completely blows that away. And not only that, but one of the more exciting things is, is you can enroll in this with your finger gloved or ungloved. If you're, wearing, if you're a doctor and you're wearing purple nitrile gloves, that's okay. If you're a sniper wearing a, uh, you know, a glove, that's okay too. So, so you see how thin this is. Is this the only piece that some cell phone company would need to put in their product? Or? Well, actually, when, it, when it's in its final packaging, and we do all of this uh, uh, in Palm Beach Gardens, uh, it's actually attached to a flex background with, uh, and, the, and the traces down here are about 30, uh, 30 nanometers, um, I'm sorry, 30 microns, and then our, uh, our ASIC is connected to that, and then that gives us our connections out the other end. And what we would typically do is ship this uh, to a uh, cell phone manufacturer who would put that into their packaging um, or underneath the screen and then uh, make it available uh, for the end consumer. Wow. We have other places where we've done, uh, we're doing and replacing uh, you know, some of our competitors' uh, sensors in products like uh, thumb drives, um, and we're in the process of uh, releasing right now the world's first um, biometrically actuated smart card, where when you, we only pick up power off of this side of the contact pad, it powers up the circuitry. When you swipe your finger across it, it then signals to this chip to release the data back across the interface. So we have uh, you know, both biometrically actuated smart card 7816 and biometrically actuated RFID antenna around the out outer edge. Wow. And we're working very closely with uh, our partner uh, HID to incorporate their technology into the RFID so that uh, we can uh, be compatible with 92% of the North American market. Wow. Yeah. And this is a, as thick as a credit card. I mean, it's it, just slightly thicker. It is. Than that, that, that particular one is slightly thicker because we did it for display to show that on the other side. But in its final package, it is an ISO standard 30 mil card. Right? All right. So this is something I could carry in my wallet, and now I have fingerprint That's right. metrics. That's right. And because our sensor is so thin, you know, there's no worry about, uh, and made out of ceramic, there's no worry about it flaking off or, or getting hung up or causing a problem or wearing down. Yeah, so the, the idea here is, is that people really carry three things with them. They carry their credit card, they carry their smartphone, they carry their keys. And pretty soon they'll be carrying their, wearing their glasses, I believe. Maybe. <laughs> I, you know, I, I figure only a few percent of people are going to have glasses before 2015, but um, everybody has a smartphone, right? I'm sure, and, but I'm saying that if you wear glasses, yeah. you always have your glasses yeah. with you, right? Yeah, no, that's true. And, and, uh, so and we always carry our keys. Correct. Um, you know, until uh, we all get cars that know that we're uh, popping in the car. This well, could be used on a door handle of a car. That's right. In fact, we're working on right now, we've prototyped up a version of this card that will have a, a low energy Bluetooth connection on it, where when you swipe your finger across it, it will release an OTP across a paired Bluetooth connection with whatever device it is that you have. Uh, you know, obviously NFC is on its way, and we have that in our roadmap as well. But we see that as a as a great market that will allow people to not just authenticate to their devices, but authenticate to all of the various accounts that they have. Maybe it's their Gmail their account, maybe it's their Box account, maybe it's their, uh, you know, uh, you name it account. Um, but by using uh, some of the industry standards, and we're definitely aligning ourselves with the uh, FIDO Alliance, which is, yeah. you know, Google and eBay slash PayPal and, um, you know, Lenovo are all heavily involved in this to create a, you know, universal standard that allows people to connect and then use a SAML assertion to get into their accounts with, uh, with a biometric, um, bring your own biometric. That's crazy. Um, 
What is, what is what is the sensor cost in quantity? I, you know, if I'm going to put in a tablet PC or a, a new cell phone, if right. I'm at, at Samsung or something like that. In low quantity, in low quantities under a million, you're looking at probably around five dollars a sensor. When you go north of a million, you know, it cuts down to half of that and beyond. Uh, you know, the real high numbers where we're actually can integrate our manufacturing process with another customer's manufacturing process, we can have that once again. Um, so this is, uh, this becomes very economical. It fits within the market dynamics and the pressures to have lower cost, you know, smart edge devices. Uh, we just want to be a part of that ecosystem and we've got the technology that really makes a uh, all the other fingerprint technology look like a me too kind of thing. Yeah. Now, ours is actually, you know, 4D ultrasound, you know, identification of who you are. And one of the other interesting things is we're really trying to take an approach that uh, that reduces the fear factor of doing that. So in this, in the case of this smart card, we actually have two processors. One does just the match, you are who you say you are. The other one is the one that releases the information. So there's actually no way of going in there and pulling your biometric off of this card. So now you're carrying around a card that is completely disconnected from a network that requires you to swipe it in order to release any data about you. Um, so therefore, you know, it's a bit more empowering to take that approach of, of uh, you know, embracing the technology and looking at how can we leverage this technology to create a, not just a better user experience, but a safer user experience and one that Americans in particular, uh, you know, will feel is not an intrusion on, you know, all of their civil <laughs> liberties. Yeah, no, th this is really important. I, you know, at Rackspace, we care a lot about keeping other people out of mm -hmm. our data centers, right? Because that protects our customers. Um, and we use lots of, you know, when you go into data centers, you have to put your finger into something and you have to, you know, sure. hand over your ID and you have to do lots of security stuff. I'm not even allowed in the data centers, right? They don't, they don't <laughs> want me running around unplugging right, people's right. data, right? Or, or stealing it or getting and access we, to it. And we have customers that are very concerned about, you know, that, that logical security. We have others that are concerned about the physical security. Uh, we had a great discussion with the State Department where they're looking for some of their hot embassies. To, how do they just get people through the door in the morning faster? Because the line of people outside the embassy in Pakistan is the biggest target that they have all day is people trying to show up to work. Yeah. So in this case, you know, how can we, how can they biometrically authenticate and get people through the door so they can go do their jobs faster? You know, there's a lot of different use cases that for this technology that aren't necessarily Orwellian. Yeah. Uh, they're really just very practical, pragmatic, and, you know, uh, and, and give an approach that provides no, benefit I'd, I'd to love the consumer. A, I'd love devices that if they get stolen off of me, you know, they don't work. Correct. You know, in, in that case, I, I look at this as a, as a bit of an IQ te tester, because if you're a thief that steals a biometric identity device and thinks no, it's I'm a good... No, I'm thinking about my smartphone. <laughs> sure, but even your smartphone. If, yeah. you, if you're a thief that steals your smartphone and thinks it's a good idea to swipe your fingerprint across it to try to get into it, uh, you know, we just know exactly where you fit in the strata, don't we? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's so that's an interesting point. Could you send that data to, uh, you know, a s cell phone manufacturer? There's, there's nothing that prevents an end user, so uh, like a manufacturer, like a cell phone uh, company from doing that with our sensor. You know, our sensor is sort of agnostic. We, you know, it's just a scanning device. What you actually do with it is up to you. Yeah. In this case, this card and this card and the pieces I'm showing here are really reference platforms. We don't believe that we know all of the answers for what products should be. We're trying to develop an ecosystem, so we're employing like the Atlassian, you know, software suite to tie out into our developer network and have folks be able to, to you know, order an SDK from us which we then deliver and then they can uh, go ahead and uh, build a solution on. And our SDK just comes and looks like a, a, you know, a mouse, if you will, right? Yeah. We ship this along with, as our reference design kit, along with our software development kit. And the software development kit gives all the libraries for both the Windows platform and the Android platform and soon the iOS platform to develop uh, solutions on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I, you know, I, I sure hope this world shows up really fast because when, when we have a cell phone ripped off, you know, I have a little password on the, on the uh, lock screen, but right. you can get around that pretty quickly um, as a hacker. And uh, then you have access to a lot of data, you know, and not, not to mention, you know, even if you just wipe the phone, now, you're, now you have a 
phone that you can sell for 300, 400 bucks on the street. Right? Yeah, exactly. I, I want a phone that's useless when you steal it from me. Because yeah, <laughs> unless you have my finger, <laughs> you, and, you know, on this device. And interestingly, we're, we're doing a project with, with uh, Motorola Mobility uh, where they have uh, a use case in South America where they're issuing these uh, new little uh, uh, devices that are bound to PDAs for the police officers to use. But th they believe that half of them are going to disappear almost immediately. And they want that exact thing. They want the device, if it's stolen, to be useless. Yeah. So that the encouragement is to return the device um, you know, rather than, uh, and, and that the data would be protected that's stored on the device. Yeah. So we have about uh, 30 patents on this technology and about 70 pending right now, and another 30 that are provisional. And that includes what we're calling biocryption, which is uh, uh, actually to use your biometric to encrypt the data on the card so that without you swiping across it, the data that is on there is absolutely useless. Uh, so even if you did get a hold of the card, you know, what's stored on there is gobbledygook. Wow. This is pretty crazy. You guys have been around for uh, six years and you were spun out of an existing company. Correct. Did you guys, uh, tell me a little bit about the company then that, that's making this. Uh, so Sonovation. Sonovation was spun out of Crossmatch technology. Crossmatch was the leader in optical. They basically built this database for the FBI uh, and a lot of the standard helped them to deliver many of those standards. They were the first ever with a thousand DPI scanning for, for optical fingerprint. Um, but the, uh, in 2008, they were planning an IPO and they decided to spin out the R&D group, which is, was us. Uh, by the end of 2008, an IPO wasn't such a great idea and now we stood alone. The chairman of the company uh, had came across with uh, the R&D team and uh, we have since put in uh, almost $50 million in six years worth of effort. Um, our CTO is a gentleman named Reiner Schmidt who for 18 years ran the Fraunhofer Institute for Ultrasound Research in Germany. Uh, you know, he has a CV this thick and we have a lot of uh, great technology as a result of his efforts. That's awesome. Well, I can't wait to see what you guys do. Th thanks for bringing the state of the art of uh, biometric scanners by here. Well, we're, we're, we're looking forward to participating in, uh, in developing solutions that make, make everybody safer. Uh, it, it's just amazing to see how thin you can make circuitry and how, how you can put it into a credit card. It's pretty pretty crazy. So thank Great. you so much. Where do we learn more about Sonovation? www.sonovation.com. S-O-N-A-V-A-T-I-O-N. Thank you so Great. much. Appreciate you having me.